Let me start by saying it is a real thrill to finally meet you. I feel like I know you and to sit down. Likewise, with you. I'm sure. <laughs> well, it's, it, it, it is terrific. And, and I mean, I've known your career for a long time as a maritime or somebody who worked in radio in the, in, in the 70s and, and, and 80s. But I was still surprised at all the superlatives in your career, the tens of millions of records that you sold, the, the four Grammys, the multiple Junos, the Hollywood Walk of Fame. When you think back, particularly to the late 70s, early 80s, like the height of your superstardom, a lot of people describe you as a significant artist. How would you tell people watching now, what was the most significant thing about Anne Murray at that time? I think the most significant thing about me at that time was having a family. That was the most important, certainly the most important thing to me, but my career was taking off and um, I had another child and it just was a slog, tough go. That is one of the things that comes out very clearly in the documentary mm. is this, how conflicted you were as you tried to build your career and the pressures to deliver albums and tour. <laughs> I figured that if I got all that exposure, that it could do nothing but help me. And what it really did was tear me down. The pressure was just too much for me at that point. I had worked close to 365 days straight. It was my job. When Snowbird became a hit, that was it. I had a job. I had to do it. I loved it so much, but I missed a lot because of that. There's some really touching moments in the documentary with you with your kids, like a mm -hmm. classic mom moment in the pool or, or playing with your kids. I, I, it sounds to me like the, the, you feel like there weren't enough of those moments. Oh no, definitely not. I missed a lot uh, being away. I was very naive to think that I could have a full-fledged career and have a family and do justice to both because in order to do the job that I was expected to do, I had to be away from home uh, a lot of the time. And that's not how to raise a family. It was my job and I had taken it on, so I persevered. We will come back to that topic though, because it, it definitely is something that is important to you. But let's talk a little bit about the, the, the superstardom music part of, of your life. And, and, and there's this picture, like I love this picture, which I hadn't seen until recently. So, <laughs> so there you are, a young woman from Spring Hill with John Lennon, Alice Cooper, Mickey Dolenz from the, the Monkees. And, and so I know there's a sp you know, particular story about this picture, yeah. but, but beyond that, I just think of all the people you rubbed shoulders with. You must marvel when you think back to, to some of the people you had contact with. Well, yes, I, I actually do. I have people who are really surprised that Jerry Seinfeld opened for me for a few years. Wow. And, and I go, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Jerry was there. I mean, he opened for me in Las Vegas and Lake Tahoe and Reno and places like that. And he hung out with the band and I knew his act down cold <laughs> because every night I'd be in my dressing room getting ready and he was on stage so I knew uh, every line that he had but he was everything that he was on TV he was exactly the wow. same yeah so so next to you on that uh, table is is one of the four Grammys that you won any Grammy is an amazing achievement <laughs> yes but the Grammy that you got for you needed me best female pop vocal, like yes. that's one of the big awards. That's one of the big ones. Well, that was a, a highlight for me because up until that time, people seemed to want to categorize me as strictly country. And so when I was nominated in the category with Barbara Streisand and Olivia Newton-John and Carly Simon and who wow. else? Donna Summer. Um, and I was sitting at home because I was seven months pregnant <laughs> watching and in disbelief when my name <laughs> was mentioned as the winner um it was quite a thrill so high that i could almost see eternity you needed me 
So You Needed Me, like any Canadian of my age, you know, is a song I know really well and worked at radio stations where we played it, maybe a little bit too much. Yeah, um, I'm sure. <laughs> but, but, but here's something that I didn't know until the documentary, and I love this story, is that not only did you know in the studio that this was it, this song was going to be a hit, uh, but also when they were going to put it on the B side of the 45, so for people who don't know what that is, that's a song that ends up getting forgotten, you went to L.A., you went to the Capitol Records building, you went to the president of the label, and you said, this needs to be the first single. I walked into the Capitol Records tower, and I went right up to Don Zimmerman's office. He was the president of Capitol at that time. I looked him in the eye, and I said, I have this feeling. Will you please go with me? When I went in to talk to record people, they were all men. But after I became a mother, when I talked to them, I did it with more conviction. I was more determined than ever to have my own way. I just said, you've got to go with my instinct. And Don Zimmerman, listen to me. He actually had to call to say, stop the presses. We're gonna do You Needed Me as an A-side. What's amazing to me about that story is two things. First of all, your confidence and commitment to do that. Like yes. I, I don't know that a lot of artists would, would, be, would feel comfortable doing that. And that secondly, that he did do it. I mean, what does that say about- Well, that was the most amazing yeah. thing. For me, I knew it. There was no question in my mind that this song was special. And he acquiesced so quickly. So maybe he felt kind of the same way. I don't really know. I, I don't think I ever, I was so surprised that he agreed so quickly <laughs> that I never ever discussed with him um, why he was so agreeable. If I named songs like Snowbird, Danny's song, or You Needed Me, uh, could you guess who my next guest is? Anne Murray. You Needed Me was huge from, from the UK to Australia, number one in the States. But international stardom never changed that down-home style. You want me to take my shoes off? Devil. Are you taping this? <laughs> Anne was super beautiful and, you know, had this great vibe about her. But she wasn't overtly sexualized. She led with her integrity her voice, her thoughtfulness. And, you know, women looked at that going, you don't have to cater to what men think about music. I love that quote. So Jan Arden says, you're super beautiful, but not overly sexualized. This is, you know, in, in your career. Well, what, what do you think of that assessment? Uh, <laughs> that's pretty accurate. I mean, I was a tomboy. I never really thought about that kind of thing. I, I wanted to sing is what I wanted to do. And um, I think I, w I was al always true to myself in the sense that I don't think that I was ever that different on stage than I am sitting here with you. I don't think so. The other thing I love about the fact that we're doing this interview is that we're doing it in Nova Scotia. I didn't know where you lived. I didn't know if we were gonna have to find you in Vegas or, or Toronto. But, oh, Vegas, but, <laughs> God forbid. <laughs> but here you are back home, and how important is that for you? Uh, it's very important to be here. I dreamed about coming home. I mean, what Maritimer doesn't? But I made the decision, and I'm so happy to be here amongst so much family where there there are two degrees of separation with it. everybody knows everybody yeah. it's just it's a wonderful feeling and you know yeah. how friendly people are and how helpful and kind um, so it feels really good to be here nice and and let me finish with this for somebody who's watching this who maybe is younger or only moved to Canada recently and and they hear me talking about all these amazing things in your career, but they, they don't really know who you are. What should they know about Anne Murray? All I can think of is that I did my job and I did it well. Short and sweet. <laughs> yeah. Well, you did. You did do your job. You did yeah, it fantastically well. Yeah, I mean, it, was, well. it, wasn't hard. it wasn't easy to do the job that I did mm -hmm. because of all the compromises, but I, 
I'm not looking for sympathy. Yeah. I'm just saying the way it was for me. Yeah. And it was tough. Um, but you can't go back. Well, you made Spring Hill proud. <laughs> you made Canada proud. And it's just a real privilege to finally, after all these years, get a chance to sit down and talk with you. So thank you very much. Thank you.